2017 Volkswagen Golf GDI Review From 25,845 pounds 9 point Subtle changes to VW's hot hatch icon are good news for a car that needed little fixing, it's one of the most expertly judged and complete performance machines you can buy. What is it? This is the facelift version of the 7th generation Volkswagen Golf GDI. VW's European outright sales champion hatchback, the Golf has just received new styling, new engines, new to segment in-car technology and a slightly lower price. Elsewhere in the range, the revision's headline changes are new 1.0 and 1.5 liter TSI petrol engines that give better fuel economy and lower emissions to the petrol side of the car's armory. There are new infotainment, active safety, and semi-autonomous driving technologies, too, new equipment, and some pretty minor exterior and interior design tweaks restricted mainly to the bumpers and lights. Had the Dieselgate scandal not forced VW to slash at least a billion euros in annual R&D spending just over a year ago, of course, you wonder if we'd be looking at a more widely revised car here. Handily for VW, there wasn't much wrong with Golf MK7 in the first place, the car having been immovable from top spot in our family hatchback class rankings since its introduction in the UK in 2013. And, since VW was good enough to include it as part of its European press launch this week, the revised Golf GDI provided our introduction to the various new components of the revised Golf range. The formative Original hot hatch has been a useful telltale for the general well-being of the fast front driver since its introduction four decades ago. It's also the Golf that most of us most care about. What's it like? The GDI is in fine fettle. In material terms, at least as far as most petrol heads would care, it hasn't changed much. But considering how much the hot hatch market has transformed around the GDI of late, it's probably a bolder move on VW's part to leave the car so unaltered than it might have been to follow the crowd, by dialing up the horsepower, chassis rates, and price tag. Thank heavens they didn't. Volkswagen has pumped up the GDI's power output by just 1.0 bhp enough to cut its 0 to 62 miles per hour acceleration claim by a solitary tenth of a second, and to add just 2 miles per hour to its top speed. That gives the standard GDI's 2.0-liter turbo engine the same 227 bhp peak of power that the outgoing GDI had when fitted with VW's optional performance pack. A new performance pack will be launched for the facelift car later this spring, boosting the GDI's power to 242 bhp and likely adding the same electronically controlled slippy diff to the car's specification, along with one or two other things. The standard GDI, meanwhile, continues with the same variable rate progressive power steering rack as before, and the same passive sports suspension, which can be upgraded to adaptively damp dynamic chassis control suspension for an extra cost. A pair of excellent leather sports seats, decorated with some attractive new red piping, awaited in our test car. It was also fitted with the Golf's new top-of-the-line 9.2 in Discover Pro infotainment system and its new 12.3 in digital instrument cluster, like the leather seats, the former is optional fit. The central infotainment setup has a bright, crisp-looking widescreen display and, for the first time in any car this size, is navigable via gesture control. However, I'm not sure it's an unqualified improvement on what went before, VW having dropped the handy rotary knobs for volume control and map zoom and switched to a touchscreen dominated control logic that can be fiddly and distracting. The new digital instruments aren't as impressive looking or easy to customize as they are on Audi's virtual cockpit, either, although they're still pretty good. Otherwise, the GDI's cabin is almost unchanged. Material quality is high, the driving position is excellent, interior space is good, the attention to detail lavished on the underlying product the humble golf really shines through. So, in a segment now busy with more powerful rivals from Ford, Peugeot, Seat, Honda, and others, how can the Golf GDI make 227 bhp feel like it's enough? Well, just as before, 
it's by the quality and linearity of the power delivery. This is an engine sufficiently responsive, consistent, and free revving that, by comparison with the more highly strung motors you find in rivals, it barely feels like it's breaking a sweat in motivating the hot golf up to what can still be a very brisk pace indeed. The GDI is more than fast enough for the kind of cross-country roads with which hot hatchbacks were once intrinsically linked. I'd probably prefer one with a manual gearbox, although the 6-speed DSG automatic in our test car proved itself a strong, rounded and quick shifting option for those who like the idea of paddle shifters on a hot hatch. What defines the GDI's point-to-point -point pace and its capacity to engage its driver much more than its power output on those give-and-take roads, though, is its excellent, poised yet absorptive suspension. Because, while rivals turn to ever firmer springing, either to put ever greater power levels onto the tarmac, or for ever more direct and increasingly overcooked handling directness, or both the golf sticks with the same sweet dynamic compromise that VW has been refining for four decades. The GDI knows how to handle a bump. Our test car's adaptive dampers delivered its body control and handling alertness up to a nicely compelling level when ramped up to sport mode but even there left room for some suppleness, and kept the car stable and settled at all times. So you can drive the GDI hard over a really testing surface of cambers, hollows, lumps and sharp edges, and it takes every single one in its stride. The chassis filters out so much more than plenty of others would, but then keeps the car keen, adhesive, and balanced through bends and gives you nothing but confidence to enjoy yourself. The GDI isn't the kind of car that forces its own contrived presence between its driver and the road, and it steers with much greater feedback and more coherent weight now, thanks, you suspect, to the Club Sport SS legacy, than ever it used to. Should I buy one? There are more exciting rivals when you're on the limit, that's undeniable. But the brilliantly judged sweetness of the Golf GDI's ride and handling compromise, plus its remarkable completeness not just as a driver's car but as a premium product, continues to demand consideration by those who want a hot hatchback cooked with a classic recipe. This is a car positioned at the nexus of value, desirability, usability, road-appropriate performance, and dynamic sophistication, and accessible driver reward. And since an increasing number of once great hot hatch purveying car makers appear to have forgotten as much, as if this car's incredible 40-year success story didn't make it plain enough, that's exactly where a hot hatch ought to abide. Volkswagen Golf GDI 3D RDSG Location Majorca, Spain On sale Now Price £29,280 Engine 4 CYLS in line, 1,984 cubic centimeters, turbocharged petrol. Power 227 bhp at 4700 rpm. Torque 258 pounds foot at 1500 4600 rpm. Gearbox 6 SPD DSG. Curb weight 1,386 kilograms. 0 to 62 miles per hour. 6.4 SEC. Top speed. 155 miles per hour. Economy. 44.8 mpg. CO2 slash tax band. 145 g slash km, 28%. Rivals. Seat Leon Cupra. Peugeot 308 GDI.